Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Uh, in this video, I'm going to review a new solar charge controller from a company called Bouge RV. It's a 60 amp model. Um, I've actually reviewed quite a few of their products in the past, and I have to say I've never really had any problems with any of them. Um, I reviewed a, a refrigerator, 12 volt refrigerator they had, and two of their solar controllers, which I actually am still using both of them, their 40 amp ones. And uh, I have a pair of their 170 watt panels on the roof for a number of years now, no problems. And just this last summer, I reviewed their new SIGS SIGS panel, very super thin panel on our boat. So they offered me, uh, just before I started south for our boondocking in the desert, they offered uh, to send me out this uh, 60 amp Sunflow solar controller. And I decided to take them up on the offer because it would really simplify my uh, off-grid system. I could replace two 40 amp controllers I was using with a 60 amp because I have about 940 watts of solar on the roof. So I needed to use two controllers because I use a 12 volt system. This one will allow me to get rid of those and simplify it down to just one controller. So it just makes everything a lot easier. Um, well, another few features that I really liked about it, well, let's go through here. Uh, it's lithium, of course, it has a, a lithium mode, user-defined mode. It also, for people that may be interested, it has a low temp cutoff for lithium. You can program a temperature where, where it won't charge, which a lot of people now are buying cheaper end batteries that don't have a low temp cutoff. So sometimes they can be damaged if you charge them below freezing, whereas you can set this one up to prevent that. As what they call three working modes, they have kind of a view mode, uh, setting mode, um, sort of thing. Um, adjustable charge current, so it can go 60 amps, but if that's for some reason that's too much, you can adjust that. And then it also has a, a smartphone app um, with as Bluetooth, but the Bluetooth is actually built into the controller. You don't need a separate dongle or everything, and it says 20 days of historical data. There's the app there. And it also has a load control. Um, some people will use uh, the load outputs for running lights at night, something like that. But I actually use it for a, a tire pressure monitor system um, extender that needs power. So I, I use it for that. There's their below freezing thing cut off. And uh, they also can, um, with the charger, you can start up a, a battery that's dead, gone, really been discharge to a level where you need a special type of charger to get it going. So this thing can do that as well. And of course, they always brag about how efficient it is, whatever. That's just compared to a the old PWM controllers. Anyway, I'll just give you a quick look at the specs. You can use either 12 volt system or 24 volt system, charge current 60 amps. Maximum solar uh, input voltage is 100 and maximum input is 900 at 12 volt or if you have a 24 volt system you can go up to 1800. Um, rated load current that's for the load terminals 20 amp and then you can adjust it from 0 to 60 amp and your battery operate voltage range is 8 volt to 12 volt. Anyway um, on this video I'm going to give you a look at how I've installed it where I've installed it I'll also go through the features in the app for you. So let's get to it. So here we are at the front of the fifth wheel in the storage compartment. It's where my batteries and inverters and chargers live. And you can see where I've mounted the new uh, 60 amp Sunflow. And like I say, that's got rid of two solar controllers and their uh, breakers and wiring and stuff. So it's really simplified things for me. If you're wondering about this one, that's my DC to DC charger that I use to charge the batteries off the truck alternator. Anyway, this is connected to the rooftop panels. Rooftop panels come down here. There's uh, two lines coming in because I have two different arrays. I have a front solar panel array and a back solar panel array and they're all wired in parallel. So the two lines come down and then they meet on these bus bars combined into one and then they go into the controller. This cover pops off. Pull that off. There we go. 
So I really like their connecting setup here. Um, a lot of controllers, you're taking the, the bare wire and pushing them in and then screwing the bare wire. This came with uh, little connectors um, included that you crimp onto your wires and then they screw in like that. So it's a very positive connection. They're not going to pull out or anything like that. And the crimps were pretty easy to, to put on. You just get a, a handheld crimper and crimp them on, put some put some heat shrink on them. So I have, uh, I believe I use six gauge wiring here. So you can see the two solar wires coming in. And then on the output, I have the positive output for my battery going through a 70 amp breaker here. And then it goes into my main uh, DC positive bus bar that go off into my batteries. As far as the negative, I just have it down and it goes straight down to my steel frame of my RV, which goes back up to another bus bar. Just kind of tidies up the wiring doing that. A um, couple other wires coming out of there. This is the temperature sensor, so it just plugs in up there. And then I have it over here. It came with a, a sticky back 3M, so I just have it stuck down there. So it just reads the temperature, and if it gets super cold, I can have it set so that it'll turn off charging to my batteries. Although my batteries do have low temperature protection, but it's just a little extra protection. And then these other two wires are for the load. Like I say, you can have this thing um, come on and, and run a load at certain hours of the day. Um, you can manually turn it on or off. I just have it set to, to 24-7. It runs a, a little uh, extender amplifier for my uh, tire pressure monitoring system. It hardly even draws like not even half an amp, so I just leave it on. But anything that runs down there, and then this is actually where it's mounted. But you can run LED lights or up to 20 amps off of the load, load terminals there. So a nice little extra feature. For mounting, I just have it screwed into, I have a an OBS uh, board behind here. I think it's about 3 8 so I just screw stuff into that. It just has a plastic kind of tarpy material for I guess it was for moisture or something. And then I have it just screwed into that. So it looks pretty good. Behind the, 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 the controller is big aluminum fins. So one nice feature of this controller, there's no fan that needs to be run. Um, so you don't have any fan noise out of it. It's just dead quiet. Some of them, the controllers you get, um, they use fans that, that ramp up and they can be a little bit noisy. But uh, in this, this environment, I have no problems. I don't go into really hot, hot environments. If I did, I could probably put, mount an external fan to help keep it cool. But it has low, high temperature shutdown protection. Um, I think it also, if it gets really high, it derates the output so that, uh, so that it doesn't hurt itself from too hot of a temperature. So you can just see there's two buttons there for doing your settings. Um, I like the display. It is backlit, but it also, you can see it really well. Really easy to see display there, and it's always on. So it's a little liquid crystal display. You can see the light come on there when you start doing something. Now you can go through all the different uh, settings using this panel. So you have the load turned on there different things like that. There's where I have 24 hour setting. If you want to set, go into any parameter and set it, just hold this for two seconds. And then it starts to flash. And then you can go through different setting parameters, pick the one you want for all the different features. And then you just hold this again for a couple, oh no, you hold it enter for two seconds, I think, and it sets it. Oops. So oh, yeah, all kinds of, this is what the lithium temperature is right now, 60 Fahrenheit. And this is the temperature of the actual controller. And you get all sorts of information in here. 
There's the amperage coming in from my rooftop solar panels right now and the voltage of the solar panels. There's the load voltage. There's my boost voltage for charging my lithium. So depending how what kind of battery you set, the the actual what you get in the display will change. So I go into here. Oops. Go into battery settings. I'm on lithium. You can do user or you can set all the parameters you want yourself. Or lead acid, gel, flooded lead acid. So AGM, gel, and flooded lead acid. But that's the one I use, lithium, of course. And then this is the default screen that comes up and it'll just uh, cycle between showing you the the voltage, battery voltage, and uh, the amount of amperage you're putting into the battery. A little bit of information, solar is on, sun is on, load is on, and the battery type right there. But anyway, I don't really use that that much. I guess it's there if people don't want to use an app or if I'm just in the battery compartment and I want to see it. But the main way I look at this and control it is through their smartphone app. So let's get a look at that and I'll, I'll show you what that looks like, the interface for that. Let's give you a look at the app. The app is called Solar. Um, I, th I believe they told me they're working on a new app to come out in the new year sometime, maybe a, a branded app. Anyway, this one works okay. Uh, one thing I don't really like about it is how bright white it is with the smaller lettering. It can be a little hard to read sometimes. I don't prefer the, the darker apps. I don't see a way to change the theme on this, so it is what it is. Anyway, up here it reports the solar panel information. <clears throat> Shows it's in MPPT charge mode right now. Voltage 17.1, current 23, and then the power that's coming off the solar panels. And then the battery voltage current and then it also has the battery temperature because I have the sensor installed there. And then it's showing my load voltage. Load is on. That's to, to run that little uh, tire pressure monitoring system extender amplifier. Right now it's not sh it's showing current is zero and power is zero. I think it's because it's such a low amount of drain that that thing pulls only less than half an amp. It doesn't even register, but it is on. And then we got here history, which is interesting. So it can give a, a really detailed history of, of uh, things, how much charge you've got. Like there's right now it's showing 80 kilowatts, days running days, 54 full charge times, all that sort of information. If you're really a information geek, I don't really look at it too much, but kind of shows what the average is. And then you can also go to a list mode. Basic info, just giving the serial number software version. You can reset the factory, check for firmware updates. And then up here, you hit this little gear icon and that's the, uh, the killer thing for this is you can go in and do all your settings in here rather than pushing the buttons on the controller itself. So you can change system voltage 12 or 24, or you can set the different uh, battery types, user defined or the flooded lead acid, gel, AGM, that sort of thing. And then in the charger settings, depend what, what battery setting you, you set, it'll some will be grayed out and some will be adjustable. So you can see here, I can change the, the amps, charging amps. Um, lower limit of set of charge right now, I have it set at zero Celsius, um, which is, uh, I think it's like 32 Fahrenheit. So I think you can change to Celsius and Fahrenheit in here somewhere too. I just have it on Celsius right now. Anyway, that, that'll stop charging when we get down to freezing. And there's also even a, right down at the bottom there, there's where it says min minus 18 on the bottom corner. That's Celsius as well. And that's where it'll stop discharging even. So that's kind of cool for people with lithium batteries. Um, for people with lead acid batteries, you can go in and set uh, equalization, um, temperature compensation, stuff like that. So you can get real granular settings on your on your battery charging. 
and then load settings. So if you're not using it like me, if you want to use it to run lights or something, you can have it say come on when um, when this, it senses that there's no more voltage on the solar panels. It can turn on an outside light or something. I just have mine set to normal mode on all the time, but you can see all the different light control settings you can have. So you can, after sundown, you could have lights come on, you know, after a certain amount of hours, things like that. So this is where the app really shines because it allows you to easily change all these settings without having to push the buttons on the controller itself. Anyway, be interested to see what they come up with with their new con their new uh, kind of branded app, but this thing seems to function quite well. And right now I'm at the very far end of my 30 foot fifth wheel, sitting at a desk near the back window and it's connecting fine to the, the solar controller that's uh, sitting in the front compartment. So the Bluetooth is pretty good. You usually get about 30 or 35 feet out of Bluetooth. But it's nice to be able to sit back here and check what's going on with my solar system. Right now we're getting almost 400 watts. It's 1048 in the morning, but this is uh, just day after Christmas. So the, the sun angle is very low and my solar panels, they, some of them are even tilted a little bit away from the sun. So. This time of year, I don't get a dramatic amount, but I do have some ground panels that I run as well. So in the summer, I'd be seeing more like about 800 watts at in the noontime, maybe as high as nine if, uh, if it was really bright and clear. Well, there you go. That's a look at the new Bouge RV Sunflow 60 amp controller. I'll continue to use it for the rest of our boondocking down here and uh, maybe come back with a, a longer term update in a few months. If you have any comments or questions, just uh, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them for you. Till next time, Ray from Love Your RV and Boat. Cheers everyone!